Hello students, this is the fifth lecture of unit number one of paper number two, digital communication and networking. In this lecture, we are going to study serial communication systems and two types of serial communication systems we are going to study asynchronous serial communication and synchronous serial communication. Finally, we will compare asynchronous communication and synchronous communication based on its performance parameters. Dear students, in this diagram, what you can observe? There is a sender A and receiver B. Sender sends one character at a time to the receiver and receiver also receives one character at a time. Here the word hello is sent from A to B. It will require five turns of transmission in order to transmit a complete word hello. Now, dear students, in this diagram, you will observe two systems. System 1 is transmitting, whereas system 2 is receiving. And system 1 is transmitting 8 bit word 10101010 to the system number 2. Now, during one turn of transmission, it transmits all the 8 bits simultaneously. Dear students, from these two examples, you can make out that the first type of system sends data serially and second time type of the system sends data parallelly. Now, let us define what the serial communication and parallel communication is. In serial type of communication, we are transmitting the data or information bit by bit. Only one bit goes through in a particular moment. So, this type of communication system is called as a serial communication system. For example, a keyboard connected to the computer. Here, we type the letters one by one and therefore, letters are transmitted to the PC in serial manner. In parallel communication, we are transmitting number of bits at once simultaneously from sender to the receiver. In earlier example, we have sent 8 bits simultaneously to the receiver. Example of parallel communication is if you are connecting printer to the parallel port of the PC, then it is called as a parallel communication. There you can observe to connect printer to the parallel port of PC, you will require a FRC cable or flat ribbon cable which contains number of conductors. So, serial type of communication requires only one pair of wires to propagate the information from one point to another point, whereas parallel communication will require n number of wires for, to transmit n number of bits from sender to receiver. So, this type of communication is called as a parallel type of communication. Dear students, the serial communication is further divided into synchronous communication and asynchronous communication. As the name implies, the, in synchronous communication, there is synchronization between 
द ट्रांसमीटर एंड रिसीवर इन दिस टाइप ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन द डेटा इज रिसीव्ड और ट्रांसमिटेड एट अ कॉन्स्टेंट टाइम इंटरवल विथ यूनिफॉर्म फेज डिफरेंस दैट मीन्स ट्रांसमीटर एंड रिसीवर मस्ट बी इन सिंक्रोनाइजेशन विथ ईच अदर एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द सिंक्रोनस कम्युनिकेशन इज द फ्रेम्स ट्रांसमिटेड ओवर लैंड लैंड मीन्स लोकल एरिया नेटवर्क इट इज अ नेटवर्क ऑफ कंप्यूटर्स इन असिंक्रोनस कम्युनिकेशन द ट्रांसमीटर मे ट्रांसमिट the data at random there should not be synchronization between transmitter and receiver so this type of communication is called as a asynchronous serial communication here the data can be received or transmitted at variable time intervals there will not be uniform phase difference phase difference may be non uniform for example the keyboard connected to computer or modem modem means modulator demodulator we are using for internet connection so these two are the examples of the asynchronous type of communication so dear students we have learned what is meaning of serial communication what is meaning of parallel communication examples of both and types of serial communication let us study asynchronous communication in detail asynchronous communication is the simplest form of the serial communication in this type of communication the data is sent in the form of byte or a character as you can observe in this diagram in this the transmission clock of transmitter and clock of receiver are not synchronized all of you have studied in digital electronics in sequential digital electronics circuit we need a source of clock pulses to synchronize the circuit in case of asynchronous communication the clock wave of transmitter and the clock wave of receiver may be of different frequencies they are not of the same frequency and they are not synchronized with each other the simplest form of protocol that is used for asynchronous communication is shown in the figure as you can observe there is a start bit and stop bit in the transmission of individual characters when no information is being transmitted the line between transmitter and receiver stays at binary 1 or logic 1 it is also called as a mark state so when there is no transmission the line between transmitter and receiver is at logic 1 so logic 1 is a stop bit of the asynchronous protocol to begin transmission of a single 7 or 8 bit ascii character a start bit is generated now this start bit is a binary zero or it is also called as a space so binary zero is transmitted at the start of the frame for a one bit time so here you can observe this is a bit time of the start bit and this start bit is usually zero the character is followed 
the character bits after start bit the character bits are transmitted here you can observe d0 to d7 are character bits it is a 8 bit character and in some protocols after character parity is attached this parity will help in error detection and error correction after that the parity bit is followed by a stop bit and that is a binary one or the mark transmitted for one or two bit intervals in some protocols it is only one bit interval and in some protocols it is of two bit intervals this signals the receiver that the character has been transmitted or the end of the character so such a uh, protocol is followed in a synchronous type of communication so as i told you it does not require any synchronization the communication takes place at random speed it requires extra bits for transmission which are start bits and stop bits which are added with the data extra bit is generally called as redundancy in technical language so this redundancy or extra bits are present in asynchronous communication and hence the asynchronous communication even though it is simple uh, it is followed with the disadvantage of the slow data rate so the data is slowly transmitted from one end to another end now let us study the synchronous communication in detail the synchronous communication the protocol becomes more complicated and the data is sent not in the form of bytes like a synchronous but data is sent in the form of blocks or frames so large amount of data is sent in the one frame Generally, this is the full duplex type of communication. And as I told you, there must be synchronization between sender and receiver. The synchronization is compulsory. That means the clock frequency of the transmitter must match with the clock frequency of the receiver. So when this happens, the synchronization between sender and receiver takes place. In this type of communication, there is no gap present between bytes and hence this is more efficient, more reliable than asynchronous transmission. It is used to transfer the large amount of data. It is also faster but with the expense of complicated protocol as you can observe in the diagram let us discuss the protocol of the synchronous communication this particular frame is an example of IBM's bisync protocol which is widely used in computer communication as you can observe the protocol begins with green color two synchronization characters. So these two characters are the synchronization characters. They bring about the synchronization between transmitter and receiver. These characters signal the beginning of the transmission and they are also used to initialize the clock timing circuits in the receiving side. This will ensure the proper synchronization of the data. After these two synchronization characters, there is what is called as SOH. This is also a character wide 
and SOH means start of header. It indicates the start of header. Header is a group of characters that usually identifies the type of the message to be sent. It also gives a block number, a priority code or some specific routing destination. So, what is the use of start of header? The start of header identifies the type of message, the block number and the priority code and even the routing destination. So, it will also indicate the destination. The end of the header is signaled by STX. Here in light blue color you will observe STX character and it gives the end of the header or start of the text. STX meaning of STX is a start of the text. It will indicate the start of the data block or it will indicate the end of the header. At this point, the desired message is transmitted one byte at a time. In synchronous transmission, there are no start bits and stop bits. Simply 7 or 8 bit words are tied together one after another and they are sent together one after another in a burst. Receiver must sort them out into individual binary words. A block usually consists of more than 256 characters. So block size may be more than 2 56 characters. At the end of the block, there is a character named ETX or ETB. ETB means end of the block or ETX means end of the text. It indicates the message is completed or the end of the message. Finally, you can observe the EOT character is transmitted at the end of the transmission. EOT means end of the transmission. Here you can observe in this protocol two BCC characters. One with yellow color and another with the red color. So BCC is nothing but binary check code. So this binary check code is generally used for error detection and error correction. And the, at the end of this BCC, there is one more character which is called as EOT. EOT means end of the transmission. So after error detection and correction code, there will be the end of the transmission. So this is how this biasing protocol is used to transmit data synchronously between two points. Now let us compare the synchronous communication and asynchronous communication. So the first parameter of comparison is the data sent at one time. Usually the data sent at one time for asynchronous communication is one byte and for synchronous communication at a time we are sending a block of the data that means it consists of multiple bytes. The second parameter is whether start and stop bits are present. In asynchronous type of communication, start and stop bits are present, but they are not present in the synchronous type of communication. Gap between data units. So, gap between data units is present in asynchronous type of communication, whereas the data is continuously sent in synchronous communication. That means gap is not present in synchronous type of communication and due to this character only the data transmission speed of the asynchronous communication is very slow whereas 
that that of synchronous communication is fast obviously the cost of asynchronous communication is lower and that of synchronous communication is greater example of asynchronous communication is communication between keyboard and computer whereas example of synchronous communication is communication between computer to computer even some more differences you can sort out uh, extra redundant bits or more redundant bits are required in asynchronous communication whereas the number of redundant bits in synchronous communication are less and therefore asynchronous communication is slower as compared to synchronous communication okay so dear students in this lecture we have studied the meaning of parallel communication serial communication we have studied serial communication in detail two types of serial communication we have studied asynchronous communication synchronous communication asynchronous protocol we have studied and synchronous ibm splicing protocol also we have studied and we have compared the performance of asynchronous and synchronous communication based on many factors dear students here is the learning test for you give a synchronous protocol here you can draw the diagram of the asynchronous protocol give example of synchronous protocol differentiate between synchronous and asynchronous serial communication apart from this the, the meaning uh, short note on synchronous communication may be asked short note on asynchronous communication may also be asked so dear student with this i will conclude our lecture number 5 i hope you like this lecture and you will study of serial communication in detail thank you